The markets in South Korea are a really unique place to be in. They're very loud, very stressful. There's motorbikes running through, there's people shouting, there's dogs barking. It's absolute chaos. It's totally foreign to what I'm used to back in New Zealand. And that's kind of why I like it. Everywhere you look, there's action. Every corner, every alleyway, there's always something happening, which makes it a really, really good place for street photography. I've been interested in black and white street photography for a little while now, especially the stuff that was coming out of Japan in around like the 70s, I think. I've got a few books over there on my bookshelf of that exact genre, the most recent one being the Provoke series by Daido Moriyama and a couple of his homies that I can't remember the name of. And honestly, I can't explain why I like this genre of photography uh, because objectively the photos are not really that good but the enjoyment in these photos is more than just looking at them and thinking huh this is a nice photo it's more like I feel like I can be transported to this time and place feel like I am the photographer or I'm with the photographer going through the space that I'll never be able to actually experience the black and white grainy aspect of it I think makes it feel more like a dream so I go through these books and even though the photos suck I, I feel like I'm in that time and I'm in that space and I really enjoy traveling through that. And for a long time, I would only consume Japanese 70s street photography and I never really bothered to sort of explore the genre further until recently when I went to several exhibitions here in Seoul, one being the Henri Cartier-Bresson exhibition and the other one being the Vivian Meyer exhibition, both of which really changed my narrow perception of street photography that I had and I really enjoyed looking through the works of both of those two photographers. It was really interesting looking at their processes and how they work and how they interact with the crowd because both of these photographers seem to do it very differently. I remember one moment in the Henri exhibition where he was talking about moving through crowds like a breeze and sort of floating with the moment and not being noticed and being like a ghost. Moments are very decisive and you either capture it or you don't and if it's gone it's gone and, and that's it i think his quote was life is once forever life is very fluid well um, sometimes the pictures disappeared and there's nothing you can do you can't tell the person oh please smile again do that gesture again life is once forever both of these photographers inspired me to get out and shoot more street photography and so i thought why not combine this style of street photography with one of the most chaotic places I know, which is Mangwon Market, which I've taken photos there a few times and had some really interesting results. And I figured while I was there, I might as well shoot like a POV street photography thing. So I attached my phone to the camera that I was using and, and took you along for the journey with me. Right at the beginning I was having some issues with the film winding correctly into the camera which resulted in a few little double exposures like this one here. But I actually kind of like it. At first I didn't even notice it until I looked closer and noticed the woman inside the man with the bike. One of my favorite things to do lately with street photography is find an object that's moving quickly past me and follow my camera with it and take the photo as it's moving, which has resulted in a few really, really cool images. In fact, some of my favorite images that I've ever taken on the street have been with this technique.
I understand that objectively these photos, they suck. They're not good photos at all. But I think that's the point. I set out to capture the movement and the chaos of this market and I think this style is kind of the best way to do it. Um, I understand looking at these photos individually, they're not very good at all, but I think the purpose is more to view them as a collection of photos and as an experience rather than judging the, the, the practical qualities of each image, if that makes any sense. If I had access to making contact sheets of these, then I absolutely would, and I think that would be the best way to present them, would be in a big contact sheet with all of the photos I took all together as you sort of move through this market. This is the only series of photographs that I've taken that I really felt could be presented in a book or a zine or printed out in some form, which I think I would kind of want to print them out for myself. Obviously I need a lot more photos to add to this collection to make it worth printing. Um, and I think that's just going to come with time. Uh, because of this style of photography, I'll probably get like five six good photos out of an entire roll of film each time that I go to a place like this so it's a very very slow process to get images that really capture what I'm trying to show but I think at some point I definitely do want to print these out and put them in a collection somewhere somehow and that is all for today thank you very much for watching once again uh, please comment how terrible my photography was down below um, and I, I hope you at least enjoy the video a little bit, like, that much. Expectations are not very high. Okay, thank you. Goodbye.